Okay, so here we are in the Bob Marshall Wilderness. This is a 79 mile route that's going to follow the Continental Divide Trail for much of it. Well, you go below the Chinese Wall and then it'll wrap around, peak out a bungalow mountain. Then around here you'll be going off trail and hiking cross country up on top of the Chinese Wall. There's no trail up here and you'll be doing some navigation of your own, uh, getting around cliffs and some bushwhacking and stuff like that. But nothing is too difficult and it's a pretty exciting hike once you're up here out on your own. And then you'll come around and take the same trail all the way back to the benchmark trailhead. So starting out at the benchmark trailhead, you'll be following the Continental Divide Trail through this wide open valley. Um, and here there's a big burn area, um, but the trail has been well maintained since the burn. You'll be crossing a bridge over the west fork of the south fork of the Sun River. There must be a bunch of forks of this Sun River. And following this valley all the way up. In between that bridge crossing and uh, the trail junction over here, there's a lot of good campsites along the river here. This can be a pretty popular area though, so even though there are a lot of campsites, it can be hard to find a site. Then when you get to this junction here with Trail 211, going along the Indian Creek, you'll be taking a right, staying on the Continental Divide Trail, which is also known as the Wall Trail at this point, and taking that up the valley. As you get closer to the wall, the valley will start to get a little bit more narrow. Uh, the trees will close in a little bit. But then once you start climbing, the trees are going to open up and you'll start to get glimpses of the wall. And this huge escarpment here is the Chinese wall. It's about a thousand feet tall. Um, as you start getting glimpses of the wall, it might be kind of frustrating because the trees kind of block your view and you don't get a full view of the wall yet. Um, but keep going up until you get to this pass that's just below Cliff Mountain. But once you get to the pass, you can take a little side trail to the left, and that's when the trees clear out, and you get amazing views of both the south and the north end of the wall. This is a pretty cool place to hang out for a little bit. And I should mention that these satellite pictures were taken in June, so that shows that there's still quite a bit of snow here in June. Um, I did the hike in early July, and that was a pretty good time to do it. Uh, there wasn't much snow to deal with. But you definitely wouldn't want to go much earlier than that. From this pass right by Cliff Mountain, um, there is no camping allowed after this. So basically from this Cliff Mountain Pass to up here where the trail turns to the east, that's with the junction of Trail 194. From here to here, there's no camping allowed, so you'll either have to camp before it or after it. That's because this whole walk along the wall is just incredible. I think they want to uh, preserve this area and make sure it isn't too heavily impacted by people. Then once you get past this junction, you have a little bit of a climb to get around to my lake. And there's a really nice campsite here at the lake. And then from my lake, you'll actually be descending down to the pass. It's kind of strange to be going downhill to a pass, but the lake is above it. So once you reach the Spotted Bear Pass, this is where you're going to leave the Continental Divide Trail. The CDT continues down to the southeast, and it actually wraps around this way, on this side of these mountains. And now that we're off the CDT, um, you may notice that this trail is a little bit less maintained than what, than what we have been hiking on. There's a few blowdowns and it gets a little bit brushy, but it's still very easy to follow, and it's not too bad. This is a long downhill walk all the way down this valley. You'll be in the trees and it's kind of closed off. You're not going to have a ton of good views around here. And down here when you reach the junction with Trail 90, you'll be taking a left and heading west to cross the Spotted Bear River. Um, it's not a very big river, but there is a chance that you'll have to ford it if you can't find rocks or logs to walk across on. And then you're not staying on Trail 90 very long. Then once you cross the river, you're going to take Trail 243 up towards Bungalow Mountain. Be careful not to stay on Trail 90, which kind of goes a similar direction, but it stays lower along this creek. 
So now you've got a decent climb all the way up this hill towards Bungalow Mountain. Before you get to this ridge and before the views start to open up, somewhere in here uh, you'll have to be keeping an eye out for creek crossings on your map because this is going to be your last water source for a while. You probably won't have any more water sources for the next eight miles until you cross Juliet Creek after Bungalow Mountain. So make sure you stock up on water here. And there is a good campsite just after Bungalow Mountain, so if you want to camp there you should plan accordingly and take some extra water from here. Follow the trail along the ridge. And then right here there will be a little bit of a side trail going up to the peak of Bungalow Mountain. And that is definitely worth it to take that side trail. The views up here are just incredible. And it's a really cool place to watch the sunset if your timing is right. And then just after Bungalow Mountain, down here there's a little bit of a saddle on the ridge. There's also some tree cover and this makes for a pretty good place to camp. Just know that there is no water so you have to plan ahead for that. And after that continue on the trail. You'll continue following down the ridge side to this other valley and then this is where you're going to cross Juliet Creek. When you reach the trail junction here with Trail 112, um, both forks are actually technically trail 112 and this is where trail 90 ends. So you'll want to take the left or the southeast fork of the trail but you'll only stay on it for about half a mile. And then around the 6500 foot contour you'll be leaving the trail to begin your bushwhack which is right about here. So after this you're kind of on your own. Uh, you'll be entering a burn area and the bushwhacking isn't going to be very glamorous from here. You'll be fighting through lots of downed trees and um, burned logs and um, unstable ground too. Pretty soon you'll cross a creek which runs down here and then after the creek you'll come up to a cliff or at least a very steep hillside which is this part. Um, if it's too steep to climb just head west this way which is downhill until you can find a place that you can climb over it. And once you get past that, just continue kind of following the edge of this tree line here in a southeastern direction. Um, obviously you'll want to avoid the forest as much as possible just because it's easier to walk on this open hillside. When you do see the open hillside, don't go directly uphill, even though that might be kind of tempting because the rim of the wall is right up here and the top of the hill because you're going to have to bypass a cliff and if you go up to the rim you're just going to have to go right back downhill to get around this cliff and this is the cliff right here. You'll be facing a few of these cliffs on top of the ridge um, where you can't just continue along the rim you'll have to go down and around the cliffs. The kind of general rule is that if you go west or downhill eventually these cliffs kind of fade into the hillside and you'll be able to hike around them. So once you see an opening in the trees don't go uphill right away kind of follow the tree line um, until you see this cliff stay below it uh, to the west of it go around the cliff and once you clear this obstacle then you can go straight uphill and then you'll be on the rim of the Chinese wall. So once you're up here on the wall, that's kind of it for the hard work of this part. Now you can take in the views and hiking along the rim is very easy. So you'll be following the rim all the way until you get to Salt Mountain. And then from Salt Mountain you can see that there's going to be kind of a dip in the rim right here and this is where you're gonna find some more cliffs. So you follow along the rim until you get to this kind of steep drop off where there are some cliffs that you'll have to bypass. So in order to do that go west or downhill until you can find a way through these cliffs. And basically once you find a way down the cliffs just hold your elevation um, because there's going to be another set of cliffs that are just below this cliff mountain. They kind of continue off the cliff mountain and there's a cliff band that runs all along here. So hold your elevation 
until you can get around that cliff band and once you clear that then you can go straight up to cliff mountain there are also a couple creeks in this area this is one of the few places that you can get water up on top of the wall probably won't be able to count down any water sources for at least four miles maybe up to nine miles depending on the year and um, what water situations are looking like this is also a pretty good place to camp another good place to camp and one of the few reliable sources of water is this little pond it's kind of in a depression just below cliff mountain so you can come down come around the cliffs under salt mountain and then hike up here and this is a good place to camp right next to the pond but so once you clear these cliffs and you get up to a cliff mountain this is probably the best view that you'll get up, up on top of the Chinese wall you'll get really good views of the north and the south end of the wall and on top of that you'll be getting amazing views of the pretty much the entire rest of the Bob Marshall Wilderness too so from Cliff Mountain heading south uh, you'll continue along the rim and then there's going to be like a secondary wall that rises up on top of the Chinese wall and this is the Sphinx Mountain you'll be going in between Sphinx Peak and the rim of the Chinese wall there is a marshy area on the maps in here and there's a creek um, but when I went through there in early July there was no flowing water here um, I did find a little bit of snow melt water kind of on the southern end of Sphinx Peak this is also a good place to camp and if you're feeling adventurous you can climb up to Sphinx Peak um, you'll have to come around the south end of the mountain and kind of look for a way to pick your way through these cliffs here if you can get up on top of the cliffs in this area then you can just follow the ridge all the way up to Sphinx Peak but continuing on our route we're gonna continue along the rim of the Chinese wall and eventually you'll be able to pick up a trail you can kind of see it coming along here that switch backs up the mountain from the west so you can follow that trail all the way to Haystack Mountain this is another good place to take a break and then just after Haystack Mountain you'll have another cliff to contend with we were able to basically just go directly down the cliff um, there was actually a little cairn that was marking a, a decent route down the cliff it's still a class 3 scramble so you'll be using your hands and feet and climbing down a pretty vertical cliff but it was doable um, if you don't feel comfortable doing that you can continue downhill until you find a way around the cliffs down here somewhere and then after you get past that cliff um, it's pretty straightforward from there you'll follow the rim of the Chinese wall all the way down to this White River Pass and then you'll be back on a trail so you'll take trail 211 east going downhill and you'll just switch back all the way down going through a valley you'll be entering the trees again and meeting back up with the Continental Divide Trail just before you cross the Sun River here there's a nice campsite on the left side of the river then after you cross the river you'll be back on the same trail that you took to get out here um, so everything should look familiar and it'll be pretty smooth sailing all the way back to the benchmark trailhead again from here all the way to the bridge crossing the Sun River here there's a ton of good campsites in this area depending on the time of the week and the time of the year you do this this section could be pretty crowded so a lot of these campsites might be taken up but after you cross the bridge here on the Sun River it's a nice easy stroll all the way downhill back to the benchmark trailhead and then you've got a nice long like hour and a half drive on the dirt roads <laughs> just to get you back to Augusta there's a couple good bars and restaurants in Augusta and I'm sure you'll be wanting to stop there on your way out.